May the spirit of the living God give you the ears to hear. This is Sister Liberty and I'm back with another teaching for you. I have been really thinking about the benefit and how much of a gift it is to have godly and healthy leadership. So one of the things that we need to respect is that the world needs leaders. The world needs someone in multiple people in different, you know, I guess certain parts of the world. But the world needs people who can help run it. Right. So that's why God has given men domain. That's why God gave Adam domain in the garden, because the world needs someone to help make sure it's going in the right direction. That's why you have prime ministers. That's why we have presidents. That's why wherever you live, you may have a king or you may have a queen because the world has to run a certain way. If there were no leaders, if there was no one who was help keeping things in order. If there was no one who was trying to guide people and lead people in the right direction, then the world would be out of order. The world would be a dangerous place. That's why we have laws. You know, we need laws, especially if you are already a person who likes to break rules. You're already a person you don't like to abide by the laws. Bad people need laws, but you don't have to tell good people to do what they're supposed to do, to do the right thing, to stop at the red lights, to stop at a stop sign, to go 25 miles or, you know, the school zone, the school zones up here where I live is 45 miles. You don't have to tell them to do these things that's already in them to do, but those that just want to rebel. They want to do their own thing. They want to think for themselves. They want to make their own decisions. Those are the kinds of people who need someone over them. I mean, we all, technically, we all need someone over us. That's why we have presidents here in America. This country has a leader and we know him as the president. There are other nations, they have a prime minister or they have presidents or they have a king and a queen simply because nations they they need someone over them because there are things that people cannot do apart from someone who is strong enough to lead them are capable of doing that's why when you see nations without a prime minister or you see those nations that are just left to themselves kind of like what the nation of Haiti is going through right now you see the chaos you see the disorderly happening. Things are out of order. Things are out of place. People are doing whatever. You know, there's no law. There's no one to judge them. There's no one to hold them accountable. And so things are just everything. And so as I have been in judges and I am just reading about how as soon as the children of Israel, as soon as their leader Joshua died and the elders that outlived Joshua, as soon as they died and you know, they had no leader. They began to do wickedly in the eyes of the Lord as soon as their leader died. Why? Because them having a leader was good for them. Sometimes you don't know what's good for you until you no longer have it. You don't know how valuable that thing is and how much of a blessing you having that thing was or you having access to that thing was until it's gone. How is it that as soon as their leader died, they begin to do evil? Meaning no one is holding them accountable. No one is staying up top of them. No one is rehearsing the word of God in their ears and reminding them of the promises of God, especially being that most of that group that left Egypt, most of them had died. And so we're talking about a new generation that, you know, Either they were young at the time when they left Egypt or they were not born. Most of this generation was born in the time of the wilderness. And so they didn't necessarily see God do the miracles in Egypt. They just heard about it. And the moment they were without a leader, you know, they began to do evil. They began to serve other gods and serve other nations. And so once God gave them over to what they were pursuing And they began to lose people, meaning God killed a lot of them. He allowed the other nations to kill them. He sold them. 
That's what it says in Judges. They got sold them over into certain nations. And so when they begin to cry out, you know, God sent them another leader. I think his name was, was Othniel, which was the younger brother of Caleb. God sent them someone else to be over them. Because as people, you need someone over you. That's why in the schools, there are teachers. And over the teachers, there is what we would call a principal. The principal is someone who kind of facilitates everything. You know, they're over the school. It's almost like the president of the school. They just have a name of a principal. The principal is the one who runs everything and makes sure Everything runs smoothly and then you have the teacher. The teacher is over the class. If the students didn't have a teacher, then how can they learn? A leader is supposed to lead you and teach you and counsel you. That's why in Proverbs chapter 11 verse 14 it says, Where no counsel is, a counselor is a leader. A counselor is a teacher. Where no counsel is, the people fall. But in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. Why is there safety? Because there's going to be order. There's going to be instructions. There's going to be structure. A teacher is supposed to run a classroom. She is not supposed to let the children do what they want to do, be all over the place. You know, that's why when there's a sub, you know, children, children can act out because they don't know this person. You know, they don't have a level of fear of this person versus their actual teacher. And so when the sub shows up, they can misbehave. They can be disrespectful. They can choose to skip class. But when their teacher is there, they know that this teacher is going to bring order. They know that this teacher is going to bring structure. This teacher is going to bring everything in alignment. And so just as though we need leaders, we need counselors, we need judges, we need presidents, we need prime ministers, we need a king, we need a queen in the world, around the world, throughout the world. You need that same order in the church. Now, it may not look like a president, it may not look like a prime minister, but it will look like a shepherd, a pastor. God does raise up pastors after his heart. You have good pastors and you have bad pastors. You have both. Just like you have good presidents and you have bad presidents. You have good prime ministers and you have bad prime ministers. And so you, you have both sides. But when you are someone who is seeking the will of God for your life, you are seeking for the Lord to lead you. You're seeking God for a healthy church. You're seeking God for him to give you sound doctrine, for him to feed you what's good for you. And you get that. Sometimes we don't know when we've come across something good because we're so used to things being so messed up, especially in the church world. So the church is its own, right? We know it is God's. It belongs to God. The church is its own. And so God has set up order even in his house. So because there is order in heaven. So we don't realize that the world runs. The world runs in a sense of law. Like heaven runs. Meaning there's the law. There's law in heaven. There's order in heaven. And so there must be order and law in the earth. The earth needs order. The earth needs law. If there was no law. If there was no order. Then the world would be a crazy place. If you know anything about what's happening in Haiti, you can see the chaos. It's chaotic right now because I don't I don't know where things are at the moment, but maybe about two months ago, I saw an ad that popped up on my computer about what Haiti was going through. And because I'm familiar with Haiti, because, you know, that's a part of my natural background, then, you know, I began to kind of briefly look into what was happening in the last time I checked. Their prime minister was not allowed back into the country and that someone else had begun to rise up in power and, you know, begin to rebel against the authority because he felt as though the person who was in charge was not doing a good job. And so he began to rebel. But with them not having a prime minister, you know, the hospitals were abandoned and neglected, meaning you know, all of the doctors and all of the nurses, everyone there had left because things had gotten that bad. And people 
who were being hurt and wounded and just injured and just sick, they were showing up to these hospitals, although no one was no one was there. No doctors were there, but you know, they felt so desperate that although no one's here, they had hopes that maybe someone will show up, maybe someone would come back. That's how desperate the people begin to become. And so when there is no counsel, when there is no one who has foresight and insight, because again, God allows us to have earthly authority so that we can see how godly authority is supposed to look. And again, we know that every leader in the world is not the best. We know that every leader in the house of God is not the best. But just as though there are good natural leaders, there are good healthy spiritual leaders as well. And we need to know how that looks. Because we've not seen good leaders in the church, we don't know what it looks like. And so when we come across good leaders and healthy leaders, we don't know how to appreciate it. We don't know how to engage that. We don't know how to actually yield to good things that God gives because good, healthy leaders come from God. Just like there is order in heaven, there has to be order in God's house, meaning there needs to be structure. There needs to be a certain way how things run. Moses was that counselor for the children of Israel. He led them out of the out of the land of Egypt and into the wilderness. And as he did, he had to keep the people in alignment because if they didn't have a leader, then they would have turned to other gods. And we know that to be true because once Caleb died, once Othniel died, the word of God says that they turned to evil. They began to worship other gods. I think it says they begin to worship ba Baal. I think it says Balin or, or Balaam. They begin to serve other idols and serve other gods. They begin to do what the other nations was doing simply because they did not have anyone over them keeping them accountable. Yeah, you need someone to hold you accountable. You need someone to give you instruction. We need to respect the fact that although you may hear from God, God does not speak to everyone the same way. Miriam and Aaron felt as though they hear from God too. But the Lord told Miriam and Aaron that I speak to Moses face to face. Listen, let's respect the fact that God chooses and picks who he wants to speak to and who he wants to speak through. We cannot assume just because we have a Bible and we classify ourselves as Christians that we hear from God. We have to humble ourselves because, again, God chooses who he wants to speak to. I can't assume that God speaks to me simply because I'm a Christian. At some level, because I have his word, he speaks. But God may speak to me differently than how he may speak to the leader. We have to respect that. We don't choose how God speaks. God chooses how he speaks and who he speaks through. And he told Miriam and Aaron, I speak to Moses face to face. I do not speak to you face to face. I do not speak to you like I speak to Moses. You have to humble yourself. Korah, Dathan, and Abiram, they felt as though Moses was not doing a good job. And so they began to rise up and to rebel against that leader. God sets leaders up for a reason because without leaders, without counselors, purposes are not fulfilled. We need order in the house of God. Yeah, it says that in Proverbs. It's all throughout Proverbs, but in Proverbs chapter 15, verse 22, it says without counselors or without counsel, purposes are disappointed. You cannot rightly develop in your purpose unless you have a man of God over you who is sent by God who has the spirit of God and he can guide you. He can develop you. He can disciple you into who you are supposed to be. And so without counsel, purposes are disappointed. This person was supposed to become this, but they did not have a healthy leader over them. They had a bad leader. You have though, they have someone over them, but they have the wrong person over them. And that's causing them to not be who they're supposed to be. That's causing them to not be on schedule. This person is supposed to be this at this time in their lives. But because they have the wrong leader over them, they can't get the kind of development that they need. They can't 
live out the growth that they're supposed to be undergoing simply because they have a bad leader. Meaning this leader is not telling them the truth. This leader is not holding them accountable. This leader is not correcting them. We need counsel in the house of God. Counselors are leaders. We need healthy and godly counselors because they are sent by God. And in the multitude of them, their safety, you're going to be you're going to be kept. Why? Because you're being told and you're being taught the things of God, the right things of God. You need someone to tell you how you are supposed to be because they have greater insight. Why? Because God speaks to them in a way that he does not speak to the rest of the congregation. I cannot think just because I have a Bible that I can hear the same as that person hears. I have to learn how to come up under, how to submit to the God-given authority that he's placed over me. If I rebel, if I want to rise up like, uh, you know, Dathan in the bottom, then I will miss my purpose. I will miss out on my calling because I won't hear clearly. I won't hear clearly. These can hear a lot more clearly. These have a foresight that you don't have. And it's for you. The reason why God give, gives leaders insight and foresight is so that they can direct the people, is so that they can guide the people into who they are supposed to be. That was Moses' job. Moses' job was to lead the people into the promised land. You know, the word of God says that Moses was the meekest man to ever live. The Lord had to build him that way in order to lead, the, lead these groups of people. Because if you knew anything about the children of Israel, they complained a lot. They spoke against Moses. They spoke against God. They spoke against his leadership. They spoke against his wisdom. They spoke against his counsel. And he still had to have a heart to lead them in. Moses didn't just throw in the towel and walk away and say, forget it. No, Moses said, no, I'm going to fulfill out God's purpose, not just for my life, but for their life. Moses told the Lord, you know, just blot out my name, but let them go in. He was willing to lay down his life just so that others can make it in and to go in. And so Moses is a good example of a godly leader, a godly leader. We see that when the children of Israel lacked a leader, they did evil in the sight of the Lord. They needed someone. You don't realize how much you need someone over you until you don't have no one over you and you're left to yourself. A child left to himself will bring his father shame. You won't know what to do because God does not speak to everyone the same. You won't know what you should be doing and what God is expecting of you because God speaks to everyone differently. He does not speak to everyone the same. God sets up godly leaders. God sets up order just like there is order in heaven. So even Satan has to abide by the order in heaven. He, when he goes before the Lord, he has to wait for God to speak to him like God did in the book of Job. Yeah. Where are you coming from? Satan says, I've come, you know, to and fro throughout the earth. He cannot speak until God speaks to him. So just as though there is order in heaven, there is order in God's house. God sets this up that way. And just like there is order in the house of God, there is order in the world. The world is set up a certain way to run. That's why you have laws that you have to abide by. That's why there is a president over the United States of America. Why? Because things are to run a certain way. Yeah, you are designed to have someone over you. That's why children have parents. Come on. This is not complex. This is not rocket science. God understands how man's heart works. Children need parents over them. You know, employees need a manager over them. You know, things have to be that way. You know, the land needs law enforcement over them. You need someone over you because any of you do us no good thing. You know, in your sinful state, you do wicked things. You do bad things. It's already in you to think and believe that you know how things work, that you know how things operate. And so God has to give us earthly leaders and give us earthly laws in order for things to run the right, the right way. How much more in the house of God? How much more? Without counsel, purposes are disappointed. But in the multitude of counselors, they are established. And then he says it right here in verse 24. It's all throughout Proverbs 
For by wise counsel, he says wise counsel again. You have many leaders, you have many different pastors, but you need a wise a wise pastor. You need a pastor that is after God's own heart. He says, for by wise counsel, thou shalt make thy war. And in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. There's going to be safety for you when you have counselors. Say good morning. <laughs> Say good morning. You're preaching today with me. When you have pastors after God's own heart, then they're going to feed you with what's good for you. They're going to give you what you need in order to remain in the will of God. They're going to feed you with the instructions of the Lord. They're going to feed you with the wisdom, the wisdom and the counsel of the Lord. You need that. How else are you going to know the will of God for your life? You cannot assume just because you have a Bible that you can hear from God. And again, you may hear a measure. You may hear a measure of God's voice. You know, God may speak to you at a measure, but God sets up leaders because he's going to speak to them and through them at a different level. But if you are prideful, if you feel as though, you know, you hear better than that, man, if you want to be like Dathan in a Byron, then, you know, God will have to <laughs> deal with you accordingly like he did with them, like he did with Marion, because God is serious about those that he's placed in a position of leadership and that he's placed in a position of you know counsel they they have counsel because god gives them instruction and they can counsel others and lead others because god has given them what they need to lead the people yeah how can the people hear if there's no preacher God is not speaking to everyone. Look at the world. Look at the direction that the world is going in. Look at the direction that the churches are going in. Because again, God is not speaking to everyone. The churches are messed up. The churches are all out of order. Why? Because you don't have anyone that's hearing from God clearly and actually is obeying the voice of the Lord to actually speak to the people and counsel them in the way that they should go. You need leaders so that you can be led. How can you be led if no one is leading you? That's why many people can go astray. That's why many people can go off because no one is leading them. No one is, and those that are leading them are not leading them in the right path. You know when you are in a good church, when you are actually growing in the Lord, you're growing in wisdom, you're growing in your personality, you're growing in more of your pursuit for God, and there's actually real transformation in your life, real change, real growth. You're seeing the hand of God move. You're hearing God speak more clearly as you are receiving counsel as you are receiving instructions. You are actually seeing God move more mildly. Like everything that you are hearing, you apply and you see the manifestations of that. You see that God is pleased with your life. God is doing things in your life that he was not doing before since you've come up under this person who you know is sent by God. Is sent by God. And you were aware at some point that this person was sent by God. Because you decided to submit yourself up under them. Yeah, there are those that God raises up. And then there are others who raises up themselves. Meaning, God is the one that appoints and anoints. But then you have those, you know, men appoints and anoint them. Or I don't know about the anointing part. Maybe appoint. Because God is the only one that can give the anointing. God is the only one that can give the anointing. But there are those who are ordained. That's what I wanted to say. There are those that are ordained and appointed by men, meaning maybe they've gone through a class or they've gone through seminary school and they want to be a pastor because, you know, the world looks at that as another career, as another, what's the word, you know, like how you could be a doctor and how you could be a mechanic and you got to go to school. The world looks at being a pastor that same way. You know, they feel as though anybody can be a pastor as long as you go through these steps and you, you know, undergo these courses and this training and, you, you, you know, you can be ordained. You can be appointed. And that's not good when God doesn't call you. God has to call this person into a, a role of pastoring, into a role of leadership because you got to be built for that. You have to be built a certain way. Everybody that's called is not ordained to be a pastor or an apostle or a bishop, or an evangelist in that way. We are all on some levels, those of us that are born again, those of us that are Christians, we are all on some level prophets. Why? Because we hear from God on some level. Everybody does not hear from God on the same level. We have to respect that. Listen, 
I can't change that. I can only respect that. I can't be offended with the fact that God may speak to this person more than he speaks to me or speaks through me because God speaks to us and God speaks through us. There are times where God will speak through a person, but not to a person, meaning this person may be getting the word. They may be getting the insight, but God is not speaking to them directly either. God is just speaking through them because God has to get a work done. We don't want to be the kind of people who God only just speaks through, but we want to be the kind of person who God speaks to. Lord, speak to me because you need to know when you are out of the will of God. You need to know when you are in the will of God. You need to know when you need to submit. We live in a rebellious generation and in, in, in a rebellious time where we don't like to submit. We don't like to yield. We don't like to come up under and thank God that we have laws that just does not care. Meaning the law doesn't, doesn't care. The government doesn't care that you don't agree with the law they just passed. The law and the government doesn't care that you don't like that law that they did over there. Or you don't like what the government is doing over here. They don't care. The law still abides. And if you break it, <laughs> you're going to have to pay the consequence. If you break this law, if you go against it, then there are consequences for breaking these laws. That's the same way in the house of God. When you break certain things, you will have to deal with God. You will have to deal with God. Just like Dayton and Abraham, they had to deal with God. And you, you just broke a law. You just rebelled against. Because, you know, really, when you rebel against authority, you're rebelling against God. Because those authorities come from God. Those authorities come from God. But the times that we're living in, we're being taught to rebel against authority. We're being taught to rebel against the government. Rebel yeah. against the law. Break the law, you know. Break the law. You know, rules are meant to be broken. And so we are living in that era where we're being taught that rules are meant to be broken. We're being taught that <laughs> we're being taught that it's okay to break a law. We're being taught that. And so when it comes to the house of God, people lack understanding of what that is supposed to look like because there are so many churches that are out of order. You don't even know. All kinds of things are happening in the house of God. All kinds of things. Things that should have never been permitted is being allowed in the house of God. And no one is bringing any order. No one is setting up any structure. The house of God is supposed to look like something. It's supposed to look like heaven on earth. How can we expect God to come and dwell in a place that he cannot recognize. The house of God is supposed to look like heaven. It's supposed to look like where God is. So there is supposed to be order. There's supposed to be structure. Things are supposed to run a particular way. If we want God to come, because really that's what it's all about. It's about pleasing the Lord. But we must respect the order of God and that God does set up people. We don't respect that. We don't respect that. And so we don't agree with it because we don't respect it because we want to rebel because we want to do our own thing. I'm telling you, people that are being left to themselves are going into error. They're going into error. They don't realize that you need someone over you. Can you imagine a company without any managers and any supervisors and, you know, people giving them orders and telling them how to do their job? You need that. You may feel as though I don't need anyone to tell me how to do my job. You do. You need someone to tell you how to be in order for you to grow. If you want to grow in this company, then you need a manager. You need someone supervising you. Adults need supervision. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Isn't that funny? Yes, adults need supervision. Yeah, they need someone over them making sure they do their job. If there's no supervisors, it, it, you know, if there's no managers, then people are not going to do their job. That's what I'm saying. We, we, we don't realize that we need this. Even in the work field, you know, we, we need it. You need supervisors. Yeah, I've worked at places when, you know, there were no supervisors or, you know, the supervisors all got fired or however that went. And, you know, everyone was just waiting for them to hire more and people just did what they wanted to do. Yeah, because no one over them who has a little bit more authority is telling them what to do when they need to do it. Because in you, you're going to rebel. It's in you to rebel. You're going to do what you want to do. Yeah, the employees did what they want to do. You know, did what they felt like doing when they wanted to do it. Listen, if the job doesn't get done, then it doesn't get done. Because I don't have anyone over me telling me what to do anyways. And many times we already want that because of pride and rebellion. It's in your your simple nature to be rebellious. It's in you. You say hi. Are you having a great day? You having a great day? 
Yes. <laughs> it's in you to want to do what you want to do, especially if you already feel like you're grown and you're an adult and you don't want anybody telling you what to do. You are already in a, at a place to rebel and to go off into your own, especially when you are being given instructions that's provoking you to change and, and provoking you to yield and to submit. We're not used to that because we've not, many of us have not had godly leaders that are sent from God, healthy leaders. And when I say healthy leaders, I mean leaders that are after God's heart and they're committed to this life of faith. They're committed to God all the way. They're sold out. And they're going to do whatever pleases the Lord. They're going to preach whatever pleases the Lord. They're going to say whatever God tells them. They're sold out. They're healthy, meaning they're not living a compromised lifestyle. They're not being worldly. They're striving for holiness. They're striving for righteousness. They're striving to please God. And they want to see others grow. They want to see others make it. Those are healthy leaders. But many of us have never had that. And so we don't know how to treat something we've never had. We, sometimes we don't know how to treat something we've never had, especially when we have not had to put in much effort to obtain it. God is just so merciful that he gives us that. Those of us that are seeking and asking and searching for that, he gives us healthy, godly leadership. It's almost as you know, if you were given something that you did not have to work for, you're going to treat that thing differently. They just gave you a car. They just gave you a house. You didn't have to work for that. You didn't have to put in anything to get that. And so, you know, it's different. It's different when you had to work for it. It's different when you have to put in all the efforts and all the sacrifices. It's different. You're going to treat that thing a lot more different because you understand, no, I had to work for this versus it being freely given to you. You're going to mistreat it. You're going to mistreat it. And so the fact that many of us have not had to do anything to get godly, healthy leaderships, sometimes we don't know how to treat it. We don't know. We don't know. But when you don't have it, then <laughs> you realize that you've had something good. You realize that. Hopefully you do. Hopefully you can get to a place where you realize, man, I've had something good, but now it's going to, things are supposed to be that way. You're supposed to feel the effects of what it's like when you don't have that. I'm telling you, the churches are out of order. They're out of order. There's all kinds of things happening. People are just in rebellion in the house of God. Please excuse me. Are in rebellion in the house of God. Jesus. I'm telling you, in the multitude of counselors, there is safety, protection. These are the ones that watch and labor for your soul. I believe as Paul says, you don't want them to be in prayer with God for you. And, you know, they'd be disappointed to have to pray for you. Or I think the word of God says, you know, it's a grief. It's a grief. I think that's how he says it. I think that's how he says it. You don't want them to have to go on your behalf, pray for you, but, you know, their spirits be grieved for you, you know, they don't really know what to talk to God about for you, for you, they don't really know, you don't want them to have to have a burden on their hearts for you, and, you know, all they can say is, you know, God have mercy, that's it, no, you want them, I think it's in Hebrews, you want them to be able to Lift up a prayer for you and pray and intercede for you and God answer their prayers. You want it to be that way. I don't know what I thought it was. Okay, yeah, it is in Hebrews. It says, this is Hebrews 13. Remember them which have the rule over you. They have rule over you. You don't like that. It's because you're rebellious. You don't like that. I, the people in the world don't like that. There's a government and a president. We want to rebel. It's in us. We need freedom. We need, and I'm not talking about the freedom to do what you want to do, because ever since they made those laws, the nation has gotten worse. The freedom of speech, the freedom of choice, the freedom to do what you want to do. All that has done was cause people to rebel even more because they already feel as though they have a voice. And their law says they can say these things and not be held accountable, not be judged. And so he says, remember them which have rule over you. Who has rule over you? Your counselors, your leaders. Your pastors, they have rule over you. They are shepherds as the word of God calls them. We want to 
call things shepherds when we want to call them shepherds. But when we don't, we want to call them something else. God sets up people over people. The world runs that way. We got to respect that. The world runs with people over people. Presidents, prime ministers, again, that's how the world operates. God has to do those things even for the wicked. Though the wicked, even the wicked need somebody over them because, again, a child of himself, he's going to do all kinds of things. He's going to think for himself. You know, you can't leave. I can't leave him by himself. I have to rule over him. I have to teach him. I have to counsel him. I have to lead him as a parent. That is my job. Parents are leaders. Parents are counselors. You have to lead, lead, lead your child. Your, your child can't say, well, I'm grown. Your child can't say, I know how to do this. Your child can't say, I got it. No, you know that your child is not capable of surviving on their own. He dare not rise up and say, I got it. I can do it. You know, I'm grown and I'm an adult. No, I can't leave you to yourself because you don't know what's good for you. You don't know what's best for you. You need someone over you. That's why God structured things this way. That's why God created life this way for the parent to be over the child because he can't be left to himself. He's going to bring his father and his mother shame because he's going to get into some stuff that's going to cause his life to be at risk. Because he doesn't know what's good for him. That's the same way with the world. The world needs law and order. Why? Because people, they don't know what's good for them. You know, if there wasn't a law that told you to stop at a red light, you would just run through it. Because you're foolish like that. You're simple-minded. You're simple-minded. Somebody has to be over you to tell you what to do. <laughs> that's just the way the world works. Because that's how human we are in our sinful state. We think like that. Sometimes we don't think that it's that serious. We don't think that that should be a law. I don't think that things should be this way. And that's why you are not the one in charge. That's why you are not the one making the decision. That's why God has to make examples out of people. Yeah, date in and Abiram and, and, and Korah. He let the ground open up and swallowed him. No, I got to make an example out of you. He allowed Miriam to get leprosy. No, I got to make an example out of you. I got to make an example out of you because you have influence. And I can't have people rebelling against my leader Moses, my servant Moses. Moses was a servant of the Lord. The word of God is a book of records of men and women who God spoke to. They were servants of the Lord. And then after you have Othniel, you had Ehud, if I'm saying his name correctly, where he led the children of Israel. Yeah, because they begin to cry out. Yeah, because things got hard for them. After they turned from God and they turned to doing evil in the sight of the Lord, they began to cry out, God have mercy. Yeah, the Lord began to allow affliction to occur and people to die and, you know, other nations to overtake them. He sold them. That's what the word of God says. No, he, he sold them. He just gave them over to these other kings for them to be oppressed, for them to be in bondage, for them to, you know, be, be killed. He gave them over to that and then he rose. He raised up someone else. And when he raised up someone else, that individual took victory. And the children of Israel, you know, they had peace for a certain amount of years. Then once Ehud died, they began to rebel again. What I'm saying is you see the sequence. You see the pattern of how every time they didn't have anyone over them, they rebelled. Why? No one is leading them. No one is instructing them. They need the insight. They need the foresight. But you may feel as though, but they're the people of God. They're the people of God. I know God was speaking to someone. God speaks to who he wants to speak to. And so, once they begin to do evil in the sight of the Lord again, and they begin to rebel, God sold them again. And they begin to cry out. And God had to raise up a woman named Deborah, a prophetess, who judged them. They needed to be judged. For those of you who say, thou should not judge, you know, I don't like judgment. This is a... a, a you know, a judge free zone. God had to raise up a judge. They needed someone over them bringing structure, bringing order, you know, bringing peace. The judges are going to bring peace. They're going to bring order. They're going to bring things back into perfect alignment because they have the wisdom for that. You don't have the wisdom for that. They have the insight for that. God speaks to them and speaks through them. Yeah, they have the foresight. They have the knowledge. They have the understanding. Why? God gave it to them. God gave it to Deborah. She was a woman and she was leading the people. The word of God says she judged them. Hey, we have a problem. You know, this person offended me and apparently I offended him. We need someone to help us solve this problem because outside of counselors, you know, purposes are disappointed. People don't know how to resolve conflict between them. So they need a judge. They need a counselor. They need someone over them. That's why you have judges in the earth where you got to go to court and you got to go see a judge. Yeah, because 
People are not designed to solve their problems necessarily on their own. Yeah, this person, you know, ran into the back of your car. They rear end you. They said it was your fault. You said it was their fault. And so you have to go before a judge. Someone has to make a righteous judgment. Someone has to bring order here because he hit you, but you saying you hit him. And, you know, someone has to bring order. That's why we have earthly judges. Oh, I don't like to be judged, but you still got to go to court. No, it doesn't matter if you want to go before the judge, judge or not. It doesn't matter if you think you were right and that person was wrong. You better show up in court. If not, you will be fine. If not, you know, there might be a warrant out for your arrest. There are things that we don't like, but that we still have to abide by. Yeah. You don't like showing up to court because you got a traffic ticket. Yeah, you don't like showing up to court because you owe child support. You still better show up in court. You may not like the judge because you don't like being judged. You don't like law and order. You don't like the way the system runs. You better show up to court. Yeah, there's order in the land. How much more in the house of God? So the Lord raised up the prophetess Deborah to judge the children of Israel. Yeah, because they needed someone over them. Them not having someone over them, it allowed them to go and do bad things. Yeah, they did evil in the sight of the Lord. Yeah, they need order. Without it, they're going to do what they want to do. This man is going to steal that person's sheep and that person's ox. This one is going to yeah. rape the woman. This one is going to beat that person. All kinds of things. <laughs> All kinds of things. And so the Lord knows that the children of Israel needed someone over them. And, you know, every time one of their leaders died, they rebelled. And God had to give them another leader once they cried out. And eventually, the children of Israel wanted a king. They wanted to be like all of the other nations. And God gave them a king. Yeah, he gave them a king. He wanted to be their only king. But they wanted a physical king. And God gave them that. And their first king was not the best example. Yeah. Sometimes... God will give you what you're asking for. When you are a person, you know, you don't want no one controlling your life to a certain degree. God will give bad people bad leaders. I'm telling you that. He will give bad people what they want. No, I don't want anyone that's going to tell me how to live my life. I just need someone to preach to me the word of God because most people, they don't know the word of God for themselves. So they need someone to preach to them the Bible. And so people will go anywhere the door is open. Anywhere the door is open, people will go. And because they don't want anyone holding them accountable, they don't want anybody telling them what to do, they don't want anyone into their personal lives because, again, we live in a time where people, they separate the church life from their personal life. Oh, no, you're not supposed to mix and mingle with that. That's not supposed to mingle together. The church life is the church life. When I leave through those doors, I don't want to hear anything about church. And so people bring a separation. But you don't understand that those two go hand in hand. That's who you are. Who you are at church has to be who you are at home. And so when you are a person who you don't want all of that, you don't want, you know, the church mingled with your personal life, then God will give you those kinds of pastors. No, I know what you want. I know you just want to only be fed on Sundays. I know you want to catch it at home on the virtual church channel. I know what you want. I know you want to want to, you only want to be told this. You don't want no one telling you how to live. You don't want no one rebuking you. Open rebuke is better than secret love. You don't want anyone correcting you and telling you that you were wrong. You, you don't want that. You don't want that. That's why most people will leave a church because of the order that God is trying to bring in the church. In most churches, they don't have that order. And most people like that. They're okay with the way things is, the way things are. I know there's no order here. And they may, there may be... You know, a measure of order, meaning when you come in, you know, sit down or stand up when you need to stand up or, you know, abide by the rules when the pastor is preaching, you know, don't be rude. And, you know, there, there's a measure of order. But as far as the people's lives, what are happening? What is happening with the lives of the people? Yeah, the pastor is not caring for them. The shepherd is supposed to care for the sheep. The shepherd doesn't just feed them one time and leave the sheep to themselves. He has to protect them. He, he has to protect them from wolves and bears and, you know, anything that can hurt them. That is the shepherd's job. You don't see a shepherd who just feeds the sheep only once a day and goes back in and leaves the sheep to themselves. He has to watch for them. When you look at the shepherds in the word of God, they had to tend to their sheep, meaning they're out there all night. That's what the shepherds were doing when the angel appeared to them and told them that the savior of the world had, had you know, has just been born. They were out there watching sheep. You got to watch the sheep. You have to protect the sheep. You have to care for the sheep. That's what makes you a good shepherd. That was King David's job before he became uh, king was to 
look after his father's sheep. What does it mean to look after the sheep? You have to supervise them. You have to watch over them because the word of God says we all like sheep have gone astray. We don't we don't know what way is right for us. We think we do. There is a way that seems right unto a man, but the end thereof is death. There is a way that seems right to us. We're like dumb sheep. The Bible compares us to sheep that have gone astray. So we need a shepherd leading us. Hey, don't go out that gate. There's a wolf waiting for you. What? What are you talking about? I'm grown. Yeah, that one sheep that wants to just go out and get injured. And the shepherd, as a good shepherd, he's going to go and get his sheep. The word of God says, Jesus gave the parable of he left the 99 to go after the one. He's going to go, a good shepherd is going to go after his sheep. Come on, come on. And then, you know, there's a parable. It's not in the Bible. I don't know how true it is, but there are some scriptures that back it up. It says how the parable says how the, the shepherd has to break the legs of the, the sheep so that the sheep can learn how to depend back on the shepherd. He learns his voice. He learns the way that he works and the sheep does not go back out again. He has to break his legs that's the whole what is it that's the whole reason why the sheep goes onto the shepherd's shoulder yeah because his legs are broke the shepherd as a good shepherd he has to correct me has to break the sheep's leg and he's gonna heal it back he's gonna take care of it. he's gonna be healed back but he has to get the sheep to rely on him and to learn of his voice that's why jesus says my sheep know my voice so he raises up shepherds to tend for the sheep not hireling there's a difference Jesus says you have the, sh the shepherds and you have the hirelings. The hirelings, they don't care about the sheep. They're going to feed the sheep. But when a wolf comes, that their hireling is going to run too. Oh, every man for himself. You wanted me to not judge you, right? And so every man for themselves. Yeah, I see that wolf coming. Oh, my goodness. My kid is about to knock this over. Yeah, every man for themselves. Sorry about that, y'all. As you, At least you know this is not script. <laughs> This is not script. This is me preaching by the spirit. But, you know, the hireling, Jesus says, he doesn't care for the sheep. He doesn't care that his sheep is dying. He doesn't care that his sheep needs help and development and instruction. He doesn't care. As far as he's concerned, that's not his job. It's my job to just feed you, not to care for you, but a shepherd is going to care for his sheep. He's going to watch for his sheep. He's going to speak to his sheep. He's going to call to his sheep, and they're going to know his voice. That's what Jesus said. My sheep, they know my voice. And that they're not going to hearken to the voice of another because they've learned of me. Jesus says, learn of me. And I will give your rest soul. How do you learn of God? By being near to God. By being close to God. That's how you learn of God. You cannot learn of God being a distance. God wants you to learn of him. But you got to come in. You got to draw near. And you have to submit up under his authority. God set this up. Man did not come up with a bright idea. And, and you know say you know let's make a church and be a pastor. God is the one that calls people. Moses was minding his business. Guess what Moses was doing? <laughs> Moses was attending sheep. Okay. That's what Moses was doing. He was attending sheep. Minding his business. Guess what? Who was the, uh, was it? Amos. Guess what Amos was doing? He was a, well, uh, uh, I forgot how it says it. He was, a, I think he was a shepherd or, I think, I think he was a shepherd. Tending sheep. And God called him. God, he was minding his business. But God called him. That's what I'm saying. God sets this up. And because God is the one that sets this up, we have to respect God's order. We have to submit and yield. Pride is going to tell you that you're grown. I'm telling you, people are missing out. And people cannot see that they have bad leaders over them because that's what they want anyways. They, they want a king. They want a king. They want a king. God will give you what you want. When you want it that bad, God will give you what you want. He'll give you what you want. If you want God to lead, if you say, Lord, I am looking for a healthy church because apparently they don't exist anymore in this, re in this region. I've heard people say that. Yeah, they don't exist anymore. People have come to our ministry simply because they could not find a healthy ministry where they were. 
And so they sought the Lord and the Lord led them. That's what I'm saying. If you really want it, God will lead you to him. God will lead you to where he is pouring out his spirit. God will lead you to where he is actually feeding his flock, where his flock is being fed and taken care of. They're not just being fed fed and then left to themselves they're being taken care of oh no man that sheep is healthy who is your shepherd because those sheep over there they look like they're starving they look like they're not well cared for they're dirty they have spots on their on their coat on, on their uh, fur yeah but these sheep over here man they look healthy. look at the fur on that thing it's just pure white Look at the size of that sheep. It's being fed. You can tell that these sheep are being well taken care of. But then you look over here, you see these sheep over there, and they look like they're starving. They look almost abandoned. God knows. God knows. So you can tell the difference between healthy sheep and sheep that are unhealthy. You, you don't need to be a science to tell the difference between a healthy sheep and an unhealthy sheep. You can tell. You can see the difference. Yeah. Yeah. These sheep over here are being fed. How can you tell? I can look at them and tell they're healthy. And then you can see over here, man, these sheep are not being fed. What are they being fed? And maybe maybe they aren't being fed at all. Maybe they, are, maybe they are only being fed, but they're not being properly taken care of. They're just being left to themselves. You can see the difference. And so God is going to give people what they want according to their heart's desire. Do you want pastors after my heart? I will give you that. Do you want pastors that I am not speaking to and speaking through? Yes, I want that because then I don't have to worry about the pastor being all up in my business because you know I have a business. Listen, when you are a son of God, you don't have any more business. You don't have any more. There is no secrecy, any prophecy in the body of Christ because your whole life is on display under heaven. Like, you're on camera. You might as well smile. You, you're on camera. There is no secrets. And so all of that has to go out of the garbage. But if that's the life that you want, if you just want to be a, a regular, normal, quiet, private Christian that's available. That's available. There are pastors to tend for sheep like that. No, I understand. You just want to be fed. You just want to eat. Listen, I'm just here to eat. That's it. I don't want you bathing me. I don't want you clothing me. I don't want you grooming me. Just feed me. Okay. There are pastors out there. like they, they, They'll take your offering. Listen, just pay me and I'll feed you, baby. That's it. <laughs> you know, we both win over here. Yeah. And then for the rest of us that are seeking God's heart, God will give us pastors according to his heart. Yeah, because you want you want me for real. You want to be different. You want to be a Christian for real. Okay, I'm going to give you this person who's going to feed you, who's going to take care of you, who's going to watch and, and, and labor for your soul. That's why in Hebrews it says, it says, remember them that has rule over you. Who is ruling over you? The pastor after God's heart is ruling over you. I didn't finish that scripture. Let me finish real quick and then I'll go. Remember them which have rule over you. Who have spoken unto you the word of God. They, they preach to you the word of God and they don't have to. Pride will tell you, well, I can read the word of God for myself. Yeah, but God has to unlock your understanding. Understanding is a gift. God chooses whose who's understanding he wants to unlock. God chooses who he wants to give insight to. Just because you have a Bible doesn't mean that you can hear from God. Satan knows the word of God too. Okay? It says, whose faith follows, meaning this person's faith backs up what they preach. You can see this person's life from a distance and up close. Man, I've been watching this person online for a long time. And now that I'm here, I can see their lives up and, and, and personal. And man, their faith follows. This is a man of faith. This is a woman of God of faith. Yeah, you can see. He says, consider the end of their conversations. Okay, that says Jesus Christ is saying yesterday, today, and forever. Consider their conversations and then drop down to verse 17. It says, obey them. We don't like that word obey. I'm sure some versions have probably taken that out because, you know, people like to cherry pick what they want to believe and what they don't want to believe. It says, obey them. It doesn't say just give them a yes. It says, obey them that have rule over you. They rule over you, but I don't want nobody over me. Nobody's over me. I'm my own person. I'm a grown woman. I'm a grown man. Don't nobody have rule over me. I make my own decisions. I have my own mind. You know, like they did on Sister Sisters. I have my own mind. Yeah, and then you're left to yourself and you go off in error. Yeah, because you have your own mind. And your own mind is going to lie to you and tell you all kinds of things. Yeah. It says, Sum submit yourselves. Submit. That means come up under. That means you. Submit yourselves for they watch for your soul. You're not watching for yourself because you're too full of you. They have a greater, a greater measure of grace to watch and labor for you. As they must give an account. They have to give an account for you. Why? Because you are a part of the flock. Their flock. 
They have to give an account. Okay, tell me what's going on with this person as they go before the Lord. What's happening with this person? Is this person growing? No, Lord, this person is actually in rebellion. Lord, I don't know what to do with this person. You want them to be able to go before God on your behalf, you know, with gladness and joy. Like, Lord, I love, Lord, bless this person. Lord, move this person up forward into position. Lord, promote this person. You want those kinds of prayers that they may do with joy. That's what I just spoke. You want them to be filled with joy when they, when they go before God on your behalf. You want them to be glad to bring up your name. You don't want them to put your name at the end and then, you know, last but not least, Lord, don't forget this person, Jesus. No. And not with grief for her. That is unprofitable for you. That's not going to benefit you. You you don't know that, though. You don't know that. But the word of God tells us that this is their job. They pray for you. They have to give an account for you. Yeah. You don't want them to say, God, just have mercy. Lord, I don't know. This one just, this, this sheet just not, it just doesn't want to align. It just does not want to agree. It does not want to be a part of what you are doing. Lord, I don't know. Yeah, you don't want that to be said of you. You don't, you don't even know what's happening. You don't even know that God has deeper conversations with like the Moseses of the congregation. Yeah, this person is the leader. This person is the one that rules over you and God speaks to them differently than how he speaks to you. Yeah. So I'm going to have to do a part two because Sister Liberty has to go. Got to go. But yeah, God bless you in Jesus' name.